page 95, example number 2. In this example, you notice that our base is now a fraction as well. So this looks scary, but remember the rule is the same. Where our base becomes a radical, the denominator of our power will become index, and the top will be stay as an exponent, right? So we're going to write that this time. The square root sign will go over both 9 over 4 because it was a 2 here, right? And then everything will get cute. So if you remember from before, when we do this, we can write that as separate. And then everything will still stay cute. Now square root of 9 is a 3. And the square root of 4 is a 2, and everything will get cute. So what do you think is going to happen at this point? So if you remember the distribution part of it, the power of a quotient, so this is 3 cubed and 2 cubed, which gives me 27 over 8. Part B we made it a little bit more complex again. We said everything is negative. So because it's a fraction, in a fraction if we have something that has a negative exponent to it, remember that both will change their positions in order to become positive. So the 4 will go to the top and the 3 will become the denominator. The 9 will become the denominator. So here, what we will do is we will write it as 4 over 9, and then that entire thing is now to a positive exponent. So this is from a previous lesson we have learned, what happens when we have a negative exponent to a base, right? A fraction base will simply switch its positions. Then the example is exactly the same as part A, except the value of 4 and 9 are in different places. So you took the square root of 4 over 9 now, and then once you will find out what that is, you will cube both, the, both of them. So the cube root of 4 is a 2, a cube root of a 9 is a 3, and then both of them will get cubed. So 2 cubed is 8, and 3 cubed is 27. You can also take a look at what is happening to these ones again. So here we're just writing them. So more practice with the same idea. My base becomes my exponent, and my index will be my denominator, which is a 3, and 1 will become my exponent, but because it's a 1, I don't need to write that. Next one, my s becomes my exponent, denominator becomes my index, and everything to the power of 4. Or you could write that as 7s to the 4. Here first we need to convert that into positive, so we're not dealing with a fraction, so we will have to just switch that base and bring it down to a denominator, and it's 1 over 6, and again it will become the exponent, so this is the radical, this will be the index here, the 6, and we don't need to write that as over 1 because 1 doesn't make any difference there. Again, negative, so we will switch its position. The V will become the radical once again. 2 is the index, which we don't need to write. We already know that square root has a 2, and then we can keep everything. It's okay to write that as 1. So if you want to write that cube inside, that is perfectly okay too. Okay. Now what happens, there is another example also given us. So they're just giving us different examples to get, get us used to this idea. 
they're giving us three diff uh, four different ways where the bases are positive or negative, and they're saying one of them has no meaning. So I'm just going to simply go and try to solve each one of them. So 64, this will be a cubed, and then I will be able to square it. And that definitely does work because I can find a cube root of 64, which is a 4, and then I can square it, which is 16. So that does have meaning to it. In part B, they're saying cube root of 60, um, cube root of negative 64, and then squaring it. And that also works because cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. Squaring it will give me positive 16. So that's okay too. Next one is 64 again, square rooting it. This time we're square rooting it, not cube rooting it. And then cubing it to the afterwards. So the square root of 64 does give me 8. And then when I cube it, it will give me 512. However, the last one, so these three worked. So that means this last one might not work. Why not? So this one is saying there's negative 64 and take a square root of it. So this is square root. That's where the problem is. And then they want me to cube it. I will get stuck right at this point. This step is not possible. Right? We can't do a square root of a negative number. So there's no way we can do a square root of it and then cube it anyway. So we're already stuck with this. So that means that was the one that we could not actually do.